2024. Did you miss us? Yay! We missed you too. We missed you too. And I know it's been a while since our last one, but I have to be honest, we needed a bit of a break because we needed to digest 2023. I mean, a lot happened, right? We saw the rise of AI, another war on Europe's doorstep, and uh, we all had to find out who Travis Kelsey was. I went to see what the Oxford English Dictionary had chosen as its word of the year. You know, what could possibly define the zeitgeist? And I have to admit, it was a word that as an elder millennial, I had never heard before. Uh, I'm still trying to figure out what a situationship means. Uh, riz, apparently uh, short for charisma. And I think I've found a way to make it relevant to Brussels. Uh, I'm going to try and use it in a sentence. The lobbyist had so much riz, I just leaked him all the documents. <laughs> I, I like the practice. I think words of the year are really fun, but we need something that's more Brussels-specific, right? We need to inject a little bit of European pop culture of our own, right? Yeah, would you like to hear some of the new words that The Schumann Show has come up with, with new definitions? Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. So, here's word number one. Spitzenkandidat. <laughs> As we now definitely know, in case it wasn't clear in 2019, Spitzenkandidat is an idea of little to no relevance. Uh, but we haven't stopped there. We've got a few more for you. The next one is a verb. <laughs> to show <Sean> Michelle. <laughs> to fail in new, unique, and surprising ways. He still has quite a bit of his term left, so I can't wait to see what Charles Michelle does next. And finally, another verb. To von der Leyen. <laughs> Which means, of course, refusing to acknowledge what everyone know, already knows you're going to do. Uh, which she confirmed a few days ago for us. We know she's going to run for a second term now. Uh, I suspect it's because she saw the rise of rents all over Europe. <laughs> so she decided to stay in her bedroom in the Berlemont. <laughs> And uh, here's a way to use all those new words in a sentence. And you're welcome, Politico. I think I've taken care of your um, headlines for the next three months. Shaw Michelle, Shaw Michelle, von der Leyen, von der Leyen. And everyone agrees Manfred Weber is Spitzenkandidat. <laughs> it's fun. New words are fun. Of course, 2024, we all know, is going to be a very big year, not least because 64 countries have elections coming up. 64, that's huge. Right? <laughs> you guys are all blasé, like, yeah, 64, no biggie. I mean, you know, could change democracy as we know it. We don't know who our friends and allies are, but yeah, yeah, 64, yeah. <laughs> Maybe you're more excited about the fact that it's also the year of the UEFA Euro 2024? Okay, we got some football fans. Great, did I say it correctly? The European Championship? Yeah, is Greece in it by any chance? Because that's the only reason I'll watch. I'm sensing that's a no. Anyway, I asked my writers who actually like and follow football to make me some jokes about how elections are like football. And here's what they come up with. Um, elections are like football because in order to win, you need to pay attention to both the left and right wing. <laughs> it's more about uh, money than it is about talent. <laughs> and you never know what's going to happen with Italy. <laughs> Good job, guys. Of course, the most important vote coming up, I think we can all agree, is... Eurovision! Yes! Yes, the Eurovision Song Contest! Uh, unfortunately, the one with the most effect on our lives is probably the European election. 
I wish it could be as popular as Eurovision. I wish there was a way to make European citizens around Europe and not just Brussels care the way we care, especially the young people. Don't you wish there was a way to galvanize the youth and get out the vote? Yeah. Well, have no fear. The commission is on it with an out of the box idea. Yeah. In fact, Commissioner Schinas himself said that since Taylor Swift had been so effective in getting American young people out to register for votes, something like 35,000 registered after she asked them to, she should do the same for us when she brings the Eros concert to Europe. And to be fair, it wouldn't be the first time that we've asked America for help. <laughs> first we had the Marshall Plan, now we have the Swift Plan. <laughs> Yeah, okay, maybe it's a little embarrassing that we have to turn to America to help us in something that is on the other side of the Atlantic. But you've got to admit, her songs kind of do lend themselves to the European narrative. We've got blank space, for example, as in <laughs> don't leave a blank space on the ballot. There's also we are never, ever getting back together. <laughs> UK, got it? And of course, who could forget the more recent anti-hero? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, I think I think I think they're onto something. I think in theory this could work. Unfortunately, in practice, by the time the European Commission sends Taylor a framework tender contract, <laughs> the whole procedure is done. It's going to be 2025, and she'll be long gone. <laughs> Well, moving swiftly on, <laughs> we've also seen farmers protest all over Europe in the last few weeks. Uh, they came to Brussels twice and they brought some gifts with them. They brought hay, they brought manure. And uh, if there are any farmers uh, watching, I don't think you had the intended effect because let's face it, here at the European Quarter, we're pretty used to smelling bullshit. <laughs> That said, I do think it's great that they came because it felt like we were at the heart of the action. And it's the first time people in DG Agri got to see a real tractor. <laughs> All makes sense. All makes sense. Unfortunately, farmers aren't the only ones who can play dirty. They should really watch their back. And that's what our first sketch is about. Enjoy the Schumann Show, everybody! Yeah.